God be the love to search and keep me. God be the prayer to move my voice. God be the strength to now uphold me. Oh, Christ, surround me. Oh, Christ, surround me. Bind to myself the name of holy. Great cloud of witnesses enfold. Prophets, apostles, angels, witness, O oh, Christ, surround me, O oh, Christ, surround me, brightness of sun and glow of moonlight, flashing of lightning, strength of wind, depth of the sea, to soil of planet, O oh, Christ, surround me, O oh, Christ, surround me, walking behind to him thy journey, going ahead to light my way, and from the above and always, O oh, Christ, surround me, O oh, Christ, surround me. in the eyes of all who see me, Christ in the ears who hear my voice, Christ in the hearts of all who know me, oh Christ surround me, oh Christ surround God be the love to search and keep me. God be the prayer to move my voice. God be the strength to now uphold me. O oh, Christ, surround me. O oh, Christ, surround me. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. And amen. Everybody, welcome uh, Matt Black to uh, worship today. Matt is uh, providing music for us today uh, while um, Andy is on vacation. So um, Matt is just relocated to the Bay Area from Chicago and is a, a longtime Presbyterian. I've known Matt for a long time. So we're grateful for you to be here and share your gifts with us, Matt. Glad. Thank, welcome. Uh, welcome all to uh, First Presbyterian Church of Palo Alto. I'm Bruce. Um, uh, the pastor here. Um, I'm coming to you today from our, our new Phoenix satellite campus. Um, I'm actually in Phoenix. As some of you know, uh, my in-law, my mother-in-law is not doing well health-wise, and so we uh, are spending uh, a couple of weeks in Phoenix unexpectedly, but um, the, the, the magic of technology, I'll be uh, with you uh, throughout the week and, and on Sundays. So we are here uh, today, and so we're grateful for those of you that have come into this space. One of the things we've been able to do is to create a space where you can join with us from wherever you may be uh, at this particular moment. And uh, so we're grateful that you've taken some time to be with us today. We are entering a season of Lent, um, and so I'll talk about that in a minute, but I do wanna 
Um, again, uh, have a few announcements as we uh, move into our worship again. We're, we're grateful that you're here, whether it's your first time or you've been here a lot, uh, for a while. Um, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, I do want to uh, make sure we lift up the back of the bulletin, which is our weekly newsletter. Um, I've been calling it Bob. Um, just because I'm trying to see if that'll catch on, but who knows if that will work. Uh, but sign up for that. Make sure you get that because that's where we send out all of our information, uh, to all the links and things that, that are going out. We're, we're working on our communication strategies uh, here at the church. So um, please, please, please sign up for that so you can keep up with what is happening. Um, also, there's some weekly things that are going on. Uh, on Tuesday nights, uh, I lead a, a half hour, very brief prayer and reflection time. So I'd invite you to do that. We don't get a chance to be quiet all that often during the week. So that happens on Tuesdays from 8.30 to 9 Pacific Standard Time. And then a choir rehearsal at seven o'clock on Thursdays. And then uh, thir uh, Thursdays at eight o'clock, we just gather, grab grab something to drink. We hang out, check in from the week um, and just be, be uh, in community. So those happen uh, every week. We'd encourage you to come to that. We also enter into Lent and we are having community groups, um, which uh, will begin tomorrow. And there are five Mondays, one hour from seven to eight on Zoom. Uh, it's not a book study. It is just gonna, it's a time for us to get together, check in a little bit more deeply than we get to do during our coffee time. Um, I'll have some guided questions. And we're using the book called Rally Litanies for Lovers of Jesus and Justice. And so there's two, two readings for each week. You don't even have to read them ahead. You can just kind of have them, read them. It's not a big, it's not a study group and it's not a book group. So um, please, please, please even sign up today. We are dividing people into groups. You'll come, we'll do about five, 10 minutes together as a whole group. And then you'll break into smaller groups and you'll stay in those groups all five weeks. So you'll get a chance to really get to know one another. All right, whether you're new or whether you are just, um, um, you've been here for a while, that'll be a time to get to know each other. So please um, sign up for that. All the links will be showing up in the chat. Um, if you are interested, this is something that has come out from the Presbyterian Peace Fellowship and our parish associate, uh, Jeff Browning, who's been working on this. Um, if you uh, are interested in knowing where you fall out on the inventory of conscious and your conscious injector kind of rating, I uh, encourage you to take this. This is, uh, you'll be sharing a little bit more about where you fall out on the passivism um, scale. I mean, it's probably not gonna be a huge shock to most of you where you when you fill this out, but it is interesting to do. So I encourage you to go ahead and do that. That will be in the chat and we'll be sharing that out through our other social media um, channels as well. At the end of our time, we will have breakouts. So we will spend about 15 minutes together. So this is kind of a casual time. Encourage uh, you all to hang out for that. We just spend 15 minutes, check in, and then we, uh, we are, are done with our time. And we're always done here on Sundays by 1130 Pacific time. So you can go ahead and join us for those breakouts. All right. Um, I do want to do a few Zoom reminders and, and uh, clue you in on a few changes for worship. Um, as always, feel free to use your video or not. We have a few times where we um, have your video on. If you'd like to, to show your face, that's fine, but it is not um, required. You do have closed captioning options and you can turn that off or on at the bottom of your screen. We are recording this, so we do post the whole service on YouTube. Uh, we try to get sermons on Instagram when we can, and we do record the chat only so our prayer team can track prayers for later. So we make sure we know kind of what are the concerns. We don't share that publicly anywhere, but YouTube gets posted, Instagram gets posted, um, and the prayers we share within our prayer team. We do try to create a safe space here. As you know, we, we've been disrupted once in a year, which is pretty good, but uh, we do have tech deacons that are watching the chat room and can answer questions. We close our service down at 1030 just to make sure everybody who's here um, are supp supposed to be here. So um, just remember that. And then as always, as we are understanding in life and in worship and in time of pandemic and everything that's going on in the world, this will not be perfect. So we are um, extending grace to one another. Service today, no bulletin. You don't have to download anything. I will guide you. We will guide you through our time together. We encourage you to sing boldly, uh, sing along with Matt. You will be muted though, so please make sure you're muted. Feel free to use the chat room and interact. That is a lovely space to share prayers and ask questions. 
I'll ask you some questions during the sermon time. You can interact there. Later on, you will be invited to offer up prayers. We do want you to do that. And uh, we have been having communion every week during this time, but we are going to not have communion during Lent. It does sound a little funny to say that we're giving up communion for Lent, but uh, during this Lenten time, we're going to take a break to shift our service a little bit. So if you've been with us the past year, things are a little bit different today, not dramatically so, but just... Uh, you may have to pay attention a little bit more to the to the order, and we'll still walk you through uh, today. So that's it uh, in terms of all the announcements and getting us set and ready to go. As we do every Sunday, we take some time for silence at the beginning of our time. We have very little time to do this during our week, and so I encourage you to get comfortable, to, to plant yourself, to listen to your breath for two minutes. I also light a candle to acknowledge that wherever you are, uh, wherever, whatever space you're occupying, and it, it is um, poignantly made real as I sit in uh, Arizona right now, that the land that I'm on, the land that you are on, has been occupied by people before us and has been taken in a variety of ways. So we take some time to center, we acknowledge the land that we are upon, and we begin our time of worship. So let's take a few moments for silence and centering. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh God, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh God, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh God, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Amen. During Lent, we are going to be using um, some litanies from um, a book called uh, Rallies, Litanies for Lovers of Jesus and Justice. And these are some of the readings that we'll be using for our Lenten <laughs> groups uh, as we go through um, Lent this time. I um, would encourage you, there's links on our website if you wanna get the book itself. Um, if you need a copy, please let me know. 
but we'll be using these. These are a little bit longer litanies than we are used to and will take the place of our confession and our insurance. Uh, Susan will lead the uh, main part and then I'm gonna invite you to join me as I read the all. So let's join our um, time together in our litany. Calling all those partaking in a resurrected life who have known a death that did not kill them. Come, those with little left to lose and those holding most things loosely but love, we need you. Come, ragamuffin, radical, rebel, repressed. Come, you who were wrong and willing to say it. Come, refusing to deny the stories of your people. Come with the assurance of God's grace as your guide. We need you. you lower the uh, sound a little bit. Slightly. I don't know if, not, I, don't know if I can. No, no one chance. Come, marchers, intercessors, artists, prophets. Come, newcomers, and those who have tried, tried again. Get close. Get close. Get closer now. Draw near. Ask questions, sing songs, take steps. We need you together. And together we'll be patient and mercifully kind, not envying, boasting, prideful, or rude. Not selfish, short-fused, scorekeeping, or spiteful, but rejoicing in the goodness of today we need you. We need you together. Because together, the movement keeps going. Sound the alarm because love cannot fail. Come resistors, revolutionaries, the meek who inherit the earth. There will indeed be a story to tell. And it is this, when the light was threatened, all God's people said, Let's go. Let's go. <clears throat> Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, oh God, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Hallelujah. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh God, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Hallelujah. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh God, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Hallelujah. Thank you all. Thank you, Matt. Uh, now is our time in our service where I wasn't going to take this part out for Sundays, where we get to see each other's faces probably for the first time in a week. So I, I stopped the sharing. I encourage you to go to Gallery View. And uh, this is, if you're visiting with us your first time, this is kind of this beautiful chaos. Uh, and you can feel free to scroll through, say hello, uh, greet each other. We'll do that for just a few minutes, and then we'll hear some scripture. So here we go. Morning, everyone. Hi, peace. Hi. Peace, Pat. Good morning. Peace. Morning. Morning, morning. Hi. morning. Hi. morning. Hi. morning. Hi. morning. Peace. Morning. Morning, everybody. Peace. Morning. Hello. 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 Hi, Edie. Oh. I'm walking. Uh, Edie's Edie. doing it the right way. <laughs> Hi, Vita. Hi, Ella. Hi, Vita. Vita. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, there's Mitzi. Hi, Hi, Mitzi. Hi, Mitzi. Hi, Mitzi. All right, all. I'm going to mute us, and we're going to go Hi, back you. and hear some scripture. Hi, Hi, 
Listen with me for the word of God in Micah 6, 1 to 16. Hear what God is saying. Arise, lay out the lawsuit before the mountains. Let the hills hear your voice. Hear, mountains, the lawsuit of God. Hear, eternal foundations of the earth. God has a lawsuit against his people. With Israel, God will argue. My people, what did I ever do to you? How have I wearied you? Answer me. I brought you up out of the land of Egypt. I redeemed you from the house of slavery. I sent Moses, Aaron, and Miriam before you. My people, remember what Moab's king Balak had planned and how Balaam, Beor's son, answered him. Remember everything from Shittim to Gilgal that you might learn to recognize the righteous acts of God. With what should I approach God and bow down before God on high? Should I come before him with entirely burned offerings, with year-old calves? Will God be pleased with thousands of rams, with many torrents of oil? Should I give my oldest child for my crime, the fruit of my body for the sin of my spirit? God has told you, human one, what is good and what the Holy One requires from you. To do justice, embrace faithful love, and walk humbly with your God. The voice of God calls out to the city. Wisdom appears when one fears your name. Hear, tribe, and who appointed her. Are the treasures of wickedness still in the house of wickedness? while the shorted basket is denounced? Can I approve wicked scales and a bag of false weights in a city whose wealthy are full of violence and whose inhabitants speak falsehoods with lying tongues in their mouths? So I have made you sick by striking you. I have struck you because of your sins. You devour, but you aren't satisfied. A gnawing emptiness is within you. You put something aside, but you don't keep it safe. That which you do try to keep safe, I will give to the sword. You sow, but you don't gather. You tread olives, but you don't anoint with oil. You tread grapes, but don't drink wine. Yet you have kept the policies of Omri, all the practices of the house of Ahab. You have followed their counsels. Therefore, I will make you a sign of destruction, your inhabitants an object of hissing. You must bear the reproach of my people. The word of God for the people of God. Woo! That is a packed piece of scripture right there. Normally when you hear Micah, you just get that, that part to uh, do what the Lord requires of you to love justice and kindness, to walk humbly with your God. And the, uh, the common English Bible translates that a little bit differently. Um, and so we're going to walk, we're going to talk a little bit about Micah today, but I want to um, first um, uh, talk a little about Lent. You know, for those of you that have grown up in the church you know Lent probably. Um, you know Lent is that time, that time forty days, uh, not including Sundays before Easter, uh, where we kind of are are modeling this the the wilderness experience of Jesus. Uh, it has traditionally been a time where folks, uh, in some traditions, give something up as a way of seeing what is sacrifice, and we we. Um, often will grow up giving something up for Lent. I'm curious, you can put in the chat what you've given up uh, for Lent in the past, or if you're doing it this time. Many of us over the years and many people have, have talked about it, and Lent is not really 
just about depriving yourself of something, but about growing closer to God and shifting in your discipline. And what does it mean for us to take something on that actually helps us to connect with God? And so it's not as much of uh, always giving something up, but it might be taking something on with the intent that it helps us to grow closer in our understanding of who God is. And so some people will give something up, others will take on a, uh, a, a discipline for the Lenten time. Uh, this, uh, this year we are focusing on um, this idea of Jesus calling us into spaces of justice and that there isn't this either or about Jesus and justice, but it's a both and or intrinsically intertwined with each other. And that for me, as we think about these moments in our world um, and the history of this particular congregation, that there is an opportunity for us to dive deeper into this calling that we have been called to um, for generations and that uh, we don't rest on our laurels and we don't rest on our knowledge that our DNA gives us these, this, this uh, leaning towards justice, but that we really dive into what it means to be called by Christ into the work of justice. And so um, that's what we're going to focus on during Lent. I will be very honest that I, I, I kind of feel like now is not the time to ask people to give things up. I just, in all honesty, I, you know, I think that people um, have been dealing with so much and there's so much stress and strife and struggle for people's spirits that, that for us, it's how do we focus on something that gives us life? What are the things that we need to be pushed on and challenged? And so that's where we're headed for our Lenten time. Um, you just heard Micah. Again, you generally hear just that the portion in the middle that we really like, uh, that portion in the middle that's kind of inspiring, uh, the portion in the middle is like justice and kindness and walk humbly with your God. That's what we're supposed to do. But we rarely hear the rest of it. We don't really get the fullness. So Micah is... Um, one of the, it, you know, Micah is a prophet, but if you read the whole book of Micah, if you've ever taken time to do that, you know, like prophets, there is a lot of hope, like if, and then there's a lot of doom. There's a lot of, here's how awful things will be, should you turn away from what God hopes for you to be and become. Remember, we are, we are looking at the fullness of who God is in the world and who God is in our scriptures. And so there is a God uh, that, that uh, in the way that humans understood God is a very kind of fearful, um, vengeful God. There's a God that kind of, how do, how do we begin to understand this form of God? But Micah fully leans into that, right? So you've heard a little bit of that already. Um, I think prophets are an interesting thing because we're all prophets are often seen as fanatical, ranting, even crazy, right? That quote unquote crazy. Um, and, you know, I, I was uh, just a cherry little story. I was, uh, I'm, I'm here in Arizona and, um, you know, you could find this anywhere, but and I, I, what we've noticed so far of our time in Arizona that, that folks here um, are more apt publicly to um, not wear masks and make comments about people and say stuff. And so I was sitting in front of a uh, little cafe yesterday outside and heard this guy ranting about all the things, like every stereotype you would want about what might be a, a person who would stand against much of what we as a congregation individuals uh, reject around vaccines and autism and there went on this whole rant about public transportation should be kept out of the suburbs because it just brings and use the word miscreants in and and then talked about all poor people being criminals and then uh, at the end of it he was uh, said oh and then all the retirees that live in Sun City they're all liberals and if any of you have ever been to Sun City or you know people in Sun City well there may be some that is not the case like you know believe what you will about ideology but that is not true so I posted that on Twitter yesterday. And I got put in Twitter jail because apparently I have some phrases in there. Anyway, so I'm out of Twitter jail now. But I, whenever I hear people like this, well, I certainly disagree and reject and all of that. I often think, man, you know what? Some of the things that you would hear in scripture, right, just to people are going to sound just as outrageous. And so how do we know that we're not the ones being spoken to by these random people who may be feeling like they're driven by God. I, this is a, a question, and I want to create false, false um, equivalencies, but 
profits sound like out there they're way out there right they're they should be pushing us to begin to think and believe about things that we think and believe now that may not be of god but to be clear prophets aren't they're not predicting the future right nor are they engaging in conspiracy theory or things that are um are, are of human making but they're telling us of god's future should we not listen to god and again there's a lot in there for us to discern but but ultimately prophets are so trying to say to us here is where we're headed we need to listen to god and, and depending on what side of that hearing you're on the prophets sound more challenging or not right when i hear people who are called prophets but they agree with everything that i believe are they really being prophetic to to me and who are the who are they being prophetic to and so key for us i think is to who are the prophets speaking to us these days what who are we being asked to become and who are we being challenged by to listen for god i think micah is one of those that has a bunch of this and the reason we listen to micah and other prophets right is because over time we've determined imperfectly i'm sure who we are to listen to and so micah offers us i think some really important lessons and challenges for us as a people that lay outside of the phrase of the justice and the kindness and the walking humbly with god that we all gravitate towards because what surrounds that is a deep frustration by god a deep frustration because god's people have not remembered and have not learned remember what moab's king balak approved and how balaam you know balaam's donkey if you remember that the how they go and they 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 hold the israelites they hold them back from meeting god that they're putting stumbling blocks before them and 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 you have to remember like we've done this over and over again and so this exasperated god is my people what did i ever do to you how have i wearied you like i can imagine my own mother and uh like the third time or the fourth time i did the same thing you could just imagine what have you what are you doing why do i what are you doing i don't deserve this right i mean the the, the third or fourth time i came back with bad grades because i was i wasn't paying attention or i was goofing off or whatever and the third or fourth time that i got into a car accident because i wasn't paying whatever it is right i could imagine just like god is is trying to guide us this frustration again and again and again you turn away from what i'm hoping you to do and to become and so we hear this frustration and in micah we're also given this charge right i want to make sure we like this charge right at the in the middle of this the the holy one requires from you to do justice and i love this translation so this is often where you hear kindness right to embrace faithful love and to walk humbly with your god and so i wonder about this right this what are those things that god is asking of us what are those things that are being we're being warned of micah is clearly talking about before and after and throughout greed and idolatry micah is warning us about the ways in which we treat those who have less than those who are not economically in power micah is is challenging kingdoms right those in power about how we treat those with less than you sow but you do not gather you tread down olives but you do not annoy with all you tread grapes but you do not drink wine we are creating all of this wealth and these things but we don't use it for the good we don't do use it in a way that would honor God. That all we're doing is we're creating, we're building up wealth, we're, we're trying to figure out a way to just build up what we have at the expense of the very things that we're trying to save and the people who are involved. I think this is a question for us during this time. The question is this, what is enough? 
I think Micah is challenging us to look at as we sit in our particular context of living and you can always justify people are richer or poorer. You can always justify somebody has more than I do and other people have more and less than I do. There's always ways we can put ourselves in categories of socioeconomics, depending on how we want that to come out. But the core question for any of us is what is enough? Because Micah is challenging us again to begin to think about, there's the, the part where he talks about the scales. Do I, do I look at the way in which you, you tilt the scales towards yourself? Do I look at the, the things that are taken because um, out of, out of um, uh, doing things in the, in the wrong way, uh, taking advantage of others? What is enough and what is worth giving up what God hopes us to be? It's about our wealth, our very wealth. It's about our possessions. It's about our achievements. That question, what is enough, is striking us so much right now because we've been forced in this time of pandemic by as a country and community as individuals to ask that question of ourselves because we've discovered that not everything that we thought was important to us before is just as important. And we have been heightened in our awareness that what we believe is enough is others have nowhere near what they need. In our time of widening wealth, that question of what is enough pushes us into deciding whether we listen and see and whether we change and acknowledge that we need to shift into how God may want us to use those things that God has given to our care. To not store up for the sake of storing up. And to answer that question, this is enough. Jesus speaks of the poor over and over again in our scriptures. Jesus is always talking about the poor. Jesus talks about the poor more than divorce or sexuality or any of the abortion, any of the things that some traditions would want us to believe Jesus cares a lot about, but I don't actually think he did. But Jesus cares about those who are poor and those who are trapped in the cycle of poverty. And Jesus again and again reminds us about what it means to accumulate wealth. He then told them a parable about a certain rich man's land producing a bountiful crop. He said to himself, what will I do? I have no place to store my harvest. Then he thought, here's what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. That's where I'll store all my grain and goods. I'll say to myself, you've stored a plenty of goods, enough for several years. Take it easy, eat, drink, and enjoy yourself. But God said to him, fool, tonight you will die. Now, who will get the things you have prepared for yourself? This is the way it will be for those who hoard things for themselves and aren't rich toward God. That passage I don't like because it challenges me to think about what is enough. You know, how much are we supposed to have in our savings? How much are we supposed to have to provide security for our children and their education? And how much are we supposed to have before we can say that's enough? or that's too much. And then who are those people in our midst that have no opportunity to do any kind of saving or provide any kind of security where the question of what is enough isn't even, even close to what we are trying to ask of ourselves. The widening wealth that we cannot ignore in our country and in our communities forces us as individuals, as a congregation and as a culture to ask what is enough. Micah would say that if we don't follow, then here is what's going to happen, and God's wrath will come upon us, and the way God will treat us in judgment will not be good. Here are a few other ways that we hear prophetic words spoken into this. We heed the cries of low-wage workers in the midst of a pandemic. We have the opportunity to reconstruct an economy that has accepted extreme inequality and unnecess unnecessary suffering for far too long. Jonathan Wilson Hartgrove, uh, prof prophet in our midst, challenging us to to not accept the norms of how we have been. From the Poor People's Campaign in Mississippi and elsewhere, it's not the weather that has put lives of so many at risk, but the decisions of millionaire executives and politicians not invent, to not invest in the appropriate infrastructure and energy sources. What have we done to accumulate wealth at the expense of the very lives of others? To the Cairo Center, 
who the direct executive director is Liz Theo Harris, who some of us know and have heard. Americans should not be fooled into thinking that the very policies and measures that left this world of ours a wreckage of inequality, racism, and poverty will now lift us out of this mess. There are prophets that are challenging us today, and we would agree intellectually with them, but our hearts and our minds and our spirits and probably many of the ways we act would call them just as fanatical because they are calling us into a better way. They are calling us to answer that question, what is enough? And it is a deep, deep question for us as individuals, as a community, and as a people. So for this Lent, I want us to hold on to this part of Micah, right? This is our calling to do justice and to embrace faithful love or to love kindness and to walk humbly with our God. But that isn't just a bumper sticker or a great tagline or just something that we gravitate towards as Christians who try to live to this standard. What surrounds that is the reasons why we embrace justice and kindness, love and humility is because we often don't. And Micah reminds us that surrounding this, we turn away from God over and over again. And so this is not an affirmation as much as it's a challenge to us. Because in most of our days and our lives, we don't do this. We don't love justice and we don't embrace this faithful love and kindness and we don't walk humbly with our God. But the prophets in our midst, the prophets in this community, we have to challenge each other to do so. So for this Lent, as we enter this time, find those places where justice that we claim to, to, to hold deep in our hearts, the justice that we have lived as a congregation for generations and will live for generations to come, that justice that in many ways, in some ways, we have become surface at, where is Jesus calling us to dive deeper? We're the prophets that are speaking to us in our languages of justice. Not that we reject justice, but the prophets who are asking us and challenging us to live into that justice to the depths and cores of our souls. That's what this Lent's going to be for us. We're not giving away anything. We're taking on a discipline of diving deeper into who Jesus is calling us to be as lovers of Jesus and justice. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, the God that continues to challenge us, the God that is not only about affirming who we are and who we are becoming, but challenges us to do so in a way that leaves behind those things that hold us back from you, O oh God. We ask that you would speak into our hearts and our minds and our souls, make us uncomfortable, disrupt that which we believe is always true, and hold us as we struggle with who you are calling us to be. Remind us that we will turn away from you. Remind us that you will receive us when we turn back. And as we explore and we think about your calling into justice this day, as we look around the world and our community, let us ask the question, what is enough? Because you have always given enough. Some of us have just taken more. We ask, oh God, that you Help us to continue to be open to exploring the ways in which you call us into this journey. We pray all this in the name of Christ and all God's people say, amen.
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Matt, for offering your gifts. I unmuted a little too early. So if you heard me sing, I apologize for that. Um, all uh, We are so grateful for the offerings that you do. Um, I love that it says see chat for online living link. I think that should be online giving link, though you live online too, Bruce. Um, so uh, we encourage you to, to uh, continue to support uh, the ministry that is happening in this place. Uh, we're grateful for the ways you continue to support. We have done remarkably well as a congregation over this past year. Uh, and so we are grateful because we know that there are many of you that are, are have been struggling this year. And, and so we are grateful for all that you can do to support the ministry that happens here. So um, there is a link for you to give online. You, if you are a person that mails in, um, we do check our mail at the church once a week. So you can continue to do that. There's also a link in the chat of all the groups that we support as a congregation and would encourage you, if you are able, uh, to continue to support so many groups that are doing frontline work in this time of pandemic. So we're grateful for that. Um, you can go ahead and do that at any point during the service or afterwards. Today, we're excited again to have Chris Iyer back, and uh, Chris is going to uh, play some special music for us. He's going to um, play a piece called Peace by Horace Silver. And then after that, we're going to do our prayers of the people, and um, uh, we'll, the way that that happens here is that um, you can use the raise hand marker in, down in your responses tab at the bottom of your screen. Uh, it should be a raise hand piece there, or if you're on the phone, you can hit star nine, and it'll raise your hand, and uh, uh, Cindy Chin Lee will call on you uh, to go ahead and um, uh, for you to unmute and lift up your prayer. And then we'll ask the community to make sure that they can pray for that during this week. Um, we also encourage you to lift up prayers in the chat room. Again, we do record those uh, not for public um, uh, sharing, but so our prayer team can make sure we follow up with folks if you are in need of prayer. Um, and at any time, you can um, go ahead and pray, uh, send prayers to prayer.request at fpresspa.org, and you can um, send prayers that way. Um, and then today we're excited. Uh, um, we're gonna, we've are gonna we shifted the way that we're doing our prayers and, and things today. So we invite a different voice in, one of our parish associates or someone to give us another word or prayer. So uh, Dr. John Rickford will be doing that for us today. So um, I'm going to stop sharing and we'll invite Chris uh, Iyer to go ahead and share some special music.
Hey man, thank you, Chris, so much. Always love when you come in and share your music. Thank you for being with us today. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Share your thanks in the chat, folks, if you want. I'm going to remove the spotlight. Um, go back to gallery view now, and we can uh, move into a time of, of prayer. And I'm going to ask uh, uh, Cindy Chin Lee to, to share the prayers of the community, and then we'll take prayers from the rest of you. So if you use your raise hand uh, after Cindy lifts up our first prayers. Hi, everyone. So we have some prayers for our community this week, prayers especially for Robin Pugh, the wife of our pastor Bruce, um, and Bruce for and their family as Robin's dad, Rudy Pugh, and her mom, uh, Joan Nats, are both dealing with very serious health issues, which is why Bruce is in Arizona. Also prayers for the family of George Wilson, prayers of thanksgiving for his life. He was a former pastor of First Pres. Prayers of comfort for his wife, Anne, and his children. George touched the hearts and minds of so many who knew him. So prayers for these families today. And if you'd like to lift up your prayers, I can call on you. Again, go ahead and use your raise hand down in your reactions, or you can wave your hand um, and somebody will try to see you. But um, and that way we can know if anything's... I see, oh, we have a few. Go for it, Cindy. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't see, oh, I see Margaret Fiddler. So you wanna meet yourself, Margaret? Or do I? Yes, thank you. I'd like to ask for prayers of thanksgiving for the life of my cousin, Gordon Leiter. I just learned last evening that um, he passed away in January after five weeks of struggling with COVID. Um, he lived in Rome, Georgia. And uh, he was 90 years old. And I asked for prayers of comfort for his family. So for Margaret's uh, cousin Gordon and his uh, passing for his family and for anybody who has experienced grief and death during this time. Uh, so we lift up him, his family, and for um, a celebration of life, but also the deep grief. So will somebody pray for Margaret's family and Gordon? Thank you. All right, next. I'm looking for raised hands. I see Vita's hand is up. Okay. Hi. Um, I, prayers for uh, Bonnie Hollinger. She is actually the pastor of the UCC church in Murphy's, the most progressive church in this area. Unfortunately, it's pretty far away from me. But uh, that's why I'm here and Zooming with you. Uh, and uh, she got the results of her first uh, surgery for breast cancer, and she needs to have additional surgery tomorrow. Now, I'm sure she has her entire congregation praying for her, but hey, let's us pray for her also. And her husband, by the way, is the director of the choir uh, from Columbia Community College, uh, to which I belong on Monday nights. So for that, the Hollinger family, that whole congregation, my many prayers. Great. Thank you, Vita. It's the, the wonder of technology. We've always been connected to everybody, but now we get to see and share prayers that we have never heard. So for the Hollinger family and for Bonnie, pastor of the UCC church there near Murphy's, we want to lift up prayers for her health, her body, mind, and spirit. And for any of you who have known people or have gone through um, this yourselves, and you know what this is like on everybody around. So prayers for the medical staff, for Bonnie and for her family. Will somebody lift up the Hollingers this son this week? Thank you. Great. All right. Others. If you have other prayers to go for it. I do see many prayers in the chat, oh. so we will send that I, to me. I see uh, Jeff. I see Jeff waving his hand. Prayer for the people of Texas. Yes, short and sweet, Jeff. That is so true. Yes, prayers for the people of Texas. Everyone experiencing this weather, politics aside in some ways, but just for those who are suffering. You're hearing so many stories. Uh, so prayers for the people of Texas. Will somebody pray for Texas and surrounding communities as well? Thank you. Yes. All right. Other, other prayers. Any others? If we can't see you, just unmute yourself and pray. No? 
Okay. Seeing none, um, we'll go ahead and have a closing word of prayer. I'll pray. And then I'm going to invite John Rickford to kind of give us our closing Lenten time. So let's pray. God, for your grace and your presence and the ways in which we come into this space, we give you so much thanks. For all of us who experience struggle and pain, grief, despair at various times and various levels for various reasons, remind us that we can bring it into this space and offer it to one another, either just from our words or only just from our spirits. We thank you for creating community so we may rest on and with one another, holding one another up when we need it, holding others up when they do. And for moments of rejoicing and new life and health and new beginnings and all of the ways in which your goodness shines through in the midst of so much struggle, we also give you thanks for the prayers that we lifted up from our hearts and our minds and our souls. Give us courage and strength to listen for you and to listen for the ways in which you respond. We thank you for this time and for these people gathered in this space at this particular moment. For your people are here striving to be faithful. Pray all this in the name of Christ and God's people say, Amen. Amen. I'm grateful to invite uh, uh, John Rickford to um, give us a final word <coughs> of prayer or, and, and poem. Okay. Well, I'd like to share with you as my closing prayer um, a few excerpts from Amanda Goodman's wonderful inaugural um, prayer, a poem, um, at the inauguration of President Joe Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, almost exactly one month ago. Now, um, I'm not as good looking, as young uh, as she is. I, I don't have a fancy coat and a red hand, headband. Um, she also goes to the Sanford of the East, went to the Sanford of the East, Harvard, place you might have heard about. But we both love poetry, and I hope you enjoy this. And Andrew's actually going to help me with a part of it. So scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. If we are to live up to our own time, then victory won't lie in the blade, but in the bridges we've made. We've seen a force that would shatter our nation rather than shear it, would destroy our country if it meant delaying democracy. And this effort very nearly succeeded. But while democracy can be periodically delayed, it can never be permanently defeated. In this truth, in this faith, we trust. But one thing is certain. If we merge mercy with might and might with right, then love becomes our legacy and change our children's birthright. So let us leave behind a country better than the one we were left with. We will rebuild, reconcile, and recover. And every known nook of our nation and every corner called our country, our people diverse and beautiful will emerge, battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade, aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blossom, blooms as we free it, for there's always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. Thank you so much for, for sharing that with us today. Um, we invite you all now to 
Um, we're going to, in a minute, we're going to go into breakout groups. I'll say a, a charge of benediction and then would invite you to um, hang around for about 15 minutes or so. If you're not able to do that, um, we're so glad that you were with us today. We're so grateful for, for you spending some time with us today. We'll give you a moment to, to zip out if you need to, and then I'll break everybody else up into groups for 15 minutes. And um, then we'll kind of spend some time together. And, and again, we'll be done um, in, in, by 11.30. So um, let me, I'm sorry, I'm in a different location here. All right. So your charge of benediction are this, to go forth into the world with compassion and justice in your hearts. To hear voices of the long silenced, see strength in that which has been deemed weak, to see one another, hear one another, care for one another, and love one another. It's all that easy, and it's all that hard. May the grace of God and the love of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore, and all God's people say, amen. Go in peace all again. Um, we're glad for you to be here with us this morning. Um, we'd love for you to stick around. I'll give you a moment if you need to take off to go ahead and do that. Otherwise, I'm gonna get our breakout groups ready and we can go ahead and spend some time checking in. All right. <clears throat> All right, here we go. All right.
Hey all, welcome back again. Uh, this space is totally a free for all. So uh, people just hang out here for about 15 minutes or so. And then at, 11, at 11.30, I close the room. So this is the time where if you wanna talk or ask questions or anything, but I'm gonna ask uh, Melissa, if you would quickly share your screen and that will start us off for this morning. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there you go. Ber Bernie was on Mars. Apparently. <laughs> That's Thanks. great. That's terrific. <laughs> Bruce, uh, in your uh, words at uh, early church this morning at the announcements, I missed uh, your how you described uh, the room that you're operating from. <laughs> oh, how I describe it? It's uh, I'm at I'm at home at Homewood Suites in Phoenix for the about four, 14 days for a couple of weeks. So um, mm -hmm. I thought about using a background, but backgrounds always distract me. So, but I did bring, I brought the candle and right. I have the singing bowl because I had, I knew I was going to do a little bit here. I did forget mm -hmm. a cup, like there's no printer here at the hotel. So oh. I normally print a bunch of stuff off beforehand and I couldn't do that, <laughs> which is fine. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And again, uh, through the, the magic of technology, I can, we can be, and the internet, I think is stronger here than at my house. So. Tell us about your book that's being published. Uh, well, I can, I don't, I mean, if folks want to know about it. Um, yeah, so I have a book coming out on March 16th called In Defense of Kindness. Um, and it looks at how kindness in social movements and social justice is an integral part of that. So I really kind of flip kindness on its head and so it's not about being nice or avoiding conflict, but it's often how we step into those spaces. So um, yeah, you can pre-order it. You can order it. For, you can order a signed copy if you want from Derek and Craig, um, or you can pre-order it on Amazon. We're trying to get people to buy two copies because I don't want to hugely support Amazon, but at the same time, my publisher wants to sell books. So. Um, Buy one from them, and that helps the numbers go up. And then you buy one from Craig and Derek, and helps that too. so <laughs> it's this really strange. Like I'm not a big author, so it's not like I get automatic stuff. But they've run a they've run three thousand for the first run, which is pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then um, we are we are here's the we're negotiating to have them at all the fills. Oh, yeah. so we'll wait. We'll wait for that. But that's what we're we're really hoping that that's comes through. Uh -huh. Oh my God, I love that, Bruce. I know. So cool. If if that that's happens, great. I I can just quit now. I can just do it. I'm just gonna go and retire I mean, in Hawaii. I mean, I mean, on the author tour. Are they, uh, are uh, they open to that? Are they you finding they're really open to considering it? Yeah, yeah, they're actually negotiating it right now. Okay. What, what was your, 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 I didn't hear it all. Say that again. Oh, what 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 are you negotiating for again? I didn't to have it. our have the book at at Phil's coffee and places. It, oh, oh, I see. Ah, at, yeah. at all of them. That will be at all of them. Much bigger. Then they'll do a giant giant print run, right? Yes, they have been then, much. Yeah. Then I could. Not, yeah. Then, yeah. then I could buy my Tesla. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Is there a is there a Kindle edition coming? There, there is, and we're actually going to do an audio as well. Are you going to read it? Mm -hmm. Oh wow! wow. Good on oh, you, Bruce. Whoa! Yeah, really there's good. my other twenty percent of my life. That's one of the things that I'm. Anyway, so yeah, it's it's very exciting and very fun, and it's weird to do all this during pandemic and all that. But um, uh, yeah, so I'm. It's it's fun. And how so many what, times? So what are you going to do next? Go ahead, Matt. Matt. I was wondering how many times in the book do you drop the name of Phil's Coffee? <laughs> only twice. Only twice. <laughs> they didn't get they didn't get their whole their own chapter or anything. I think they just get something. I mentioned Phil's in every book I've written because I've done most of my writing out of Phil's. So uh, yeah, this is this is a like it, it may actually happen. We'll see. <laughs> Well, unless Jesse supports, she's a very regular customer. In fact, she brings two coffees every day, one for me. I'm basically for. paying rent here by delivering <laughs> coffee. Well, every it, day. Eventually, it, eventually it adds up because. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 No, I know. We have by far more fills than 
I'm basically, I use Phil's as an excuse to spend time with my youngest child who's going to leave us pretty soon. Because every day we're like, let's walk to Phil's and we walk to Phil's. So there you go. That's good. Okay. Is that at Middle Field in Loma Verde? Yes, that's my that's my favorite Phil's. That Phil's is the one that's most close to the original Phil's in San Francisco, the one on 24th and Folsom. All the other Phil's that have been opened are much more fancier kind of, uh, but the one on Middlefield and the one at 24th and Mission in San Francisco still feel like old school Phil's. They're all fine, but those are two of my favorite. Uh -huh. but, you know, I, I remember the original Pete's, which was just mm -hmm. off of Union Street in San Francisco. And I- Is that right? Remember, I especially, was I was there one time when I saw a man eat his napkin. Oh. <laughs> was he that hungry? I don't know. It was an unforgettable <laughs> sight. <laughs> uh, Janet, I thought the first Pete's was in Berkeley, North I Berkeley. Did too. I did too. No, I think it was in, I think this was in, it was in San Francisco off the Union Street, but it was in like 16. Oh, oh, the second one was here in Menlo Park. On, you yeah. really you bring in your own cup and you get a refill for 25 cents. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> Three napkins. <laughs> Bruce, Bruce, this is Gail. On, on uh, check, I am unmuted. Go ahead, Gail. Uh, check with you the library in Palo Alto. I don't know if you use the library system, but um, you know, if and I will be checking with the library too to make sure they have it. And if so they I, so we if you just haven't got, recommended it, I will recommend it to the library and other people can do so that. So I just got my, I got the review for the library review is the, is the place where all the libraries look and they reviewed the book already and it's very positive. So um, we're hoping that, uh, so the library journal is the one and then the library review is the one that reviews all the books and they, it's the first book that this publisher has ever had reviewed by them. Whoa. Yeah. So I had a question too, Bruce. Is uh, Phil's only in uh, Northern California? No, they're countrywide now. Countrywide now? Yep. Mm. Oh, okay. So I can. Uh, yeah, DC, can DC, Chicago, a lot, a lot of Northern and Southern California. Um, I don't know where else, but yeah, they're all, they're all over. <laughs> I don't know. So, Bruce, how Ev says not in Minnesota, Bruce. Not in Minnesota. I know. We can, I, I would always, but Ev, I, we sent Ev a four pound bag of Phil's coffee. So, and Ev went through it, but in a month and a half, I'm like, pretty quick. It's not, that feels like that's not that much. You know, you need wow. that caffeine. Four <laughs> pounds. Four, oh, okay. We went through, we're, it's two, two people. It took us about a month. Yeah, about a month and a half. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's all right. It's, it's well, it's tired. well worth it. Well worth it. What else am I doing? That's yeah, true. It's just coffee all the time. So, so, so Ev, is it freezing where you are? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you have power and water because you're not in a. Yes. In a well, we're used to this. Like last right. week, we usually have at least a week or two of it in solidly in the negatives. Right. Sometime in February, because February just sucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell them about your window, Ev, because this does not make sense to me. I don't know why this is like so foreign to you. The fact that it gets cold outside and because it's warmer inside than outside, condensation forms on the windows and then the windows are cold because there's snow. So they freeze so there's ice on my windows right. on the inside uh, yes on the yeah. inside yeah. Yeah. that's oh. how it is <laughs> but no, that's logical you need to wrong. Logical. it's just cold like we're fine what temperature is it uh outside it is in the 20s right now oh that's warm that's oh, warm. Yeah. Yes. that is warm for for recently it uh -huh. was negative 40 with wind chill, like two oh. weeks ago. Oh. And you just don't go outside when it's like that, right? No, for like five minutes. <laughs> now, now, there's ice fishing to be done. 
<laughs> out, out onto the lake and not to be done good. by me. <laughs> Where are you? I remember one time in Massachusetts when it had been like negative 12 for a while and suddenly it warmed up and it was like this spring thaw and I took off my gloves and I took off my parka and I was and then I saw a temperature sign and it was 25. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so much warmer than it had been that I was like going spring is here. That's what I thought yesterday when I went outside and it was 20 instead of Fabulous. negative 20. Yeah. <laughs> so for those that know, Ev is in Minneapolis. Right. So yeah. that's, that's. Wow. That, that's why I quoted the ice fishing reference. Yeah. That's yeah. what people in Minnesota do for fun, apparently. Is they they do. No, they... Lake and cut a hole in the ice and fish. And that have an ice house. I do not. <laughs> ice house is fancy, Evan. My grandparents used to sit in a little hole cut out in the ice. <laughs> there is nothing that seems fun about ice fishing. Have any of you ever done ice fishing? Maybe it is fun. Yes. I don't want to. I don't want to judge. It is, and one of my grandsons loves it. Oh. It, it, it's an when I was a girl in Detroit, my dad would was fascinated by this, and so I remember, you know, driving out on the. You know, the Detroit Ooh. River connects Lake Erie to, to Lake Huron, basically, and, you know, driving out on the river, and we just kind of wandered around watching these guys. I mean, I think the beer is a big part of it. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> uh, as a kid, I found it very fascinating. It's a good cure for cabin fever as well, right? You're mm -hmm. so tired of being with all the people you're normally with. Uh, going ice fishing gives you a chance to be away from them for a while, and Spend some quality time with your male friends and mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. And a way to get food. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's Maybe. actually ancillary from what I can tell. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Exactly. I miss how's, every, how's everybody else? How's everybody else doing? Is there any uh, updates or things going on in life? Vaccines all going okay and uh, as yeah, planned. And... Yesterday. Great. I awesome. Surely not had It's totally wonderful feeling safe. Jeff, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. did you say you and Shirley got vaccine? Your first Just one? The first one yeah. I've had both of them. You yeah. have another yeah. one March both. 12th, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I got both of the, the the second one on Friday. Uh, but I'm gonna continue to mask and be very careful. Right. Yep. <laughs> yes. Yep. As a good scientist plane flight to Kansas City. <laughs> For the rest of us, for the rest of us, yes. Yeah, yeah. I think we can meet up with other vaccinated people after we've had the second shot and two weeks later. Uh -huh. still supposed to have I'm hoping for. Yeah. At least two weeks. With masks. Bruce, I'm hoping that you will be able to get it soon because I think people who provide spiritual care and go into Yeah, Cal California has important. not, California is not giving priority to pastors at all. Oh. So. Yeah. I mean, there's good and bad. I mean, if you go to a state that does, that's probably a state that I might not be as comfortable serving in. <laughs> Would you visit? So, you know, yeah, I bet Arizona, I, you know what? Now that I'm here, I might be able to get one here. Yeah. Uh, this this morning, I was, I drove out because we're an hour later. So I, I woke up at my regular time. So I'm like, oh, I have three hours before church. So I got up and, and drove, did a little shopping and I drove down the street and every church that you would think would be open had their parking lots not packed but full and then every church that you would think would probably not be open nobody was there <laughs> so we're falling right along the lines of where people should be stereotypes come from somewhere and so uh yeah it was fascinating to see people yeah. this big old uh calvary chapel tons of people just streaming into their services so Where we ask or at without i would say about half Oof. yeah just being around here um i was telling our my the smart group that um if you go to a store there's usually two or three or five <laughs> mostly dudes standing out making comments about people wearing the masks they won't wear them so their partners are in doing all the shopping well, they're standing outside because they can't go in because they don't have their masks on. Mm -hmm. And so, the, and they're making comments, right? So we're like, I, I know that people 
have those in their heads where we live in, you know, back in California, but people don't say it out loud. I, <laughs> there's some filtering going on here. I mean, the guy that I was overhearing yesterday ranting about all of the things, I mean, that's not the only time I've heard that just wandering around here. So it's a, Arizona, it, it's, earned, it's earned some of its, uh, <laughs> What an interesting place to be. What like, are you in? Are you in Maricopa I mean, County? Oh yeah. Oh. What's the town? I, I, we're we're just at we're just at the edge of Phoenix. Oh right. Oh. Is yeah. is that Sun City? Well, we're so we couldn't find a place in Sun City that we could stay at. We chose a hotel over an Airbnb. We were just feeling like that might uh, we found a suite kind of thing. So. Um, we're not far from uh, Sun City, but the funniest thing that that guy said was that everybody who lives in Sun City are liberals. Uh, no, <laughs> not so. That is no not way. true. Wildly crazy. Yeah. That is not true. My in-laws true. lived in Sun City, and I didn't. I didn't observe that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, what a gentle remark. <laughs> it was so fun. I and I was again. I was trying not to make eye contact with him because I had no interest in interacting. But I laughed out loud when I heard that. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> anyway. Well, that's really not thinking about the people who have to take care of you when you get sick from not. Oh going no, to I mean, there's. So to count. I, you know, that I mean, I can't help but go there when I hear these stories. It does create some inner pain and angst, you know. So yeah. I think about all the essential workers, all of yep. them. Yeah, that continue well, to work, and then these dudes, you know. Uh, uh, but you have to do that when, as a healthcare provider, you have to take care of whoever comes your way. That is true. Uh, so, well, Robin's uh, been. Robin has actually been in the hospital. She spent the, most of the day yesterday with her mom, so uh, that's good. And then tomorrow she'll get to. Um, it'll be her stepfather will come in, and then they're just going to alternate days, and we'll be here. We'll drive back next Tuesday. I think that's the plan. We'll leave early on Tuesday. So we'll be here another little over a week. Um, so so appreciate all the prayers from folks and, and everything. I think we're, we're doing as best we can. And we have the Zoom, so we can always connect and things. So um, I'm going to close this down. Thank you all for being here. Thank have a good you. rest of the day. Oh always Thank good checking you, in. Bruce. You Take too. Care, all. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Good to see everyone.